Episode 1, Spare Parts Cruising the Coast 2018. This show is going to be about cars, it's going to be about food, it's going to be about music, uh, but most of all it's going to be about family and Mike and I and the rest of the family getting together and going to Cruising the Coast in 2018. In early August, I got a text from Pat. Yeah, I sent him a text. I, I may have been in my cups. Uh, it was probably a little bit later in the evening, but I um, had been working on my own project. I've got an 82 Regal that I've done an LS swap on. Uh, and um, I posted something on Facebook about the car running, and uh, you know, Mike made some kind of comment on Facebook that, uh, that he was excited about that and that he wished he could do a project like that, so I decided to throw down the challenge. Um, Mike has always wanted to work on a hot rod project of his own, so I decided uh, to offer my help. Uh, I've done LS swaps, I've worked on cars over the years uh, with Dad and with other folks, and uh, so, you know, put my hand-fisted mechanical knowledge together with uh, Mike's desire and uh, uh, tenacity to, to get his own hot rod done. So uh, we decided to do a challenge to build both of our cars, LS swaps, get them ready for cruising the coast 2018. They've got to be safe, they've got to be reliable, and they've got to make it all the way to Biloxi and back. I've always been about cars and playing with cars since the word go. Uh, so my, my first car in high school was a 68 Chevelle uh, 307 two-speed two power glide. I uh, got to play with that. The body was in really good shape. Certainly wasn't a fast car, but it was certainly a lot of fun for a 16-year-old. Uh, later on, I stepped up into an 85 Mustang GT, 210 horsepower from the factory. I thought I was hot stuff. Uh, I had a lot of fun in that little pony car, and that got me up in, into college. Uh, later on, when Dad got into Grand Nationals, I ended up picking up uh, an 87 view at Grand National, and I owned that car for longer than I have ever owned any car. I probably had that one about a dozen years. Uh, went through several motors and transmissions and uh, turbo setups and whatever on that car and the quest to go faster and faster. And that's where I developed my love of the G-Body. Uh, you had a Nova for a while. I did. I did. I did. He flipped. Well, no, well, he didn't flip the car. He <laughs> bought it, fixed it up, sold it quickly. That the next owner flipped. flipped the car. <laughs> I flipped it first and then he actually flipped it. But uh, yeah, I love that Nova and uh, did a, a lot of work on that. Uh, I was an enthusiast, but uh, wasn't uh, nearly the gearhead that Patrick and Dad were. So while they were building cars, I was appreciating the work that they did. I knew how to do basic stuff and I was happy with that. Um, but then uh, I started watching Pat with his hot rod and uh, how much fun it was to uh, go out and pull a motor from the junkyard, clean it up, fix it up, put it in a new car, and you've got a hot rod. That idea was very intriguing to me. So when Pat uh, made the, the offer and threw down the challenge, how could I walk away from that? Absolutely. Stretch that dough. Can you throw it in the air? The first one's hot. That's good, but then it ended up on the floor. Maybe it's stuck on the ceiling? Mike's dreams come true. A barbecue pizza. Barbecue pizza right is here. real. Right here thing. in the Lambert House. Barbecue oh, pizza is a real thing. Okay, do it. It's catchy. This is the way it's it goes. Right. This is, is the, the fable barbecue pizza. So I'm going to have a... Are you sure that one? Okay. But wait, don't, don't leave that. Okay. That one's delicious. It's going to be hot in your mouth. I know. This will be the best thing I put in my mouth. Maybe all day. That is delicious. All your dreams are coming out. It's real, bud. Hey honey, what happened the other day when y'all went to wrench apart? You were like gone forever and you came back with like nothing. 
Well, what happened was Alex offered to help and he ended up playing a gig the night before. So we were supposed to leave at four in the morning so that we could be in Austin by eight and get out there to the yard while it was still early before it got too hot. Well, I went to pick him up and it turned out he never went to sleep. So he stayed up all the way uh, on the drive. We get up to Pat's place, Pat's lollygagging around. We don't leave there until almost nine o'clock. And then they have to get breakfast. So we have to get coffee and biscuits. And we get out to the yard. Um, we take everything over to the truck and they act like they've never seen a wrench before. So I'm like, okay guys, this is what we've got to do. You know, Pat, I need you to work on this. Alex, uh, I need you to get up in the cab and uh, start taking that accelerator assembly apart. So Alex fooled around with that for a couple of hours. At least he was in the shade. Um, Pat didn't really seem to know what to do. So I went up underneath and unbolted the drive shaft. Um, they were both just kind of looking at the engine, uh, waiting for it to jump out. So um, I grabbed some wrenches and basically did most of the work myself. Uh, so we got it to a point where we could move it, but we couldn't lift it out. Uh, the sun was really getting hot. Uh, Alex kept disappearing. I don't know what he was doing, but he would disappear for a while and then show up with water. So I guess he was making a water run, but I don't know where he went. So they were both starting to fade. I could see that I wasn't going to be able to get any more work out of them. So I just called it for the day and said, hey, we'll uh, come back tomorrow, uh, knowing that I would not be able to come back because I had other plans. So uh, Pat actually went back uh, and he finished the job, uh, which is makes sense because he didn't do too much the day before so uh, he went and got it uh, the next day but uh, that's really the way it happened hmm interesting well i think it must have been snowing that day at least there was two snowflakes where i was working bro what are you doing my drill oh this i'm uh, replacing my uh my muffler bearings so that's for winter time it's, it's a volvo thing so it's winter. hey man Tell me how you, it went the other day at the junkyard. You know, it was, it was all right. You know, I went with my dad and my uncle, you know, pulling out a motor, you know, just, a, just an LS1 motor, you know, not too big of a deal. I've done it a couple times, you know, go to the junkyard quite a bit, you know, got my own car to work on all the time and stuff. And, you know, it was a pretty simple job, you know, Pat and, and, and Mike, you know, kind of just sat around, didn't really do anything, you know, and making the young buck do all the work. I don't really get it, you know, as to why, but, you know, guess maybe they thought I was more experienced so you know just a couple bolts just unhooked you know one of the hoses and just ripped it out it was pretty pretty simple you know There's nothing to it really I don't understand why they really didn't do anything but whatever it's fine you know I was kind of the, the team captain that day did uh, pretty much everything by myself he's also the uh, the water boy he spent over a hundred dollars in water for us it's a mile walk I walked there and back, made sure that Dad and Pat had plenty to drink, even though they didn't do anything. And uh, sure enough, you know, two hours later, we got that motor out, we were good to go. So Pitmaster P, what was your version? Uh, my version. Well, I had gone out the day before to scout and make sure that if we had a motor, didn't want Mike and Alex to drive all the way out for no reason. And I found two uh, possible candidates, uh, so I knew we were solid. Fox, I repeat, the fox is in the hen house. Uh, the next morning, Mike and uh, Alex showed up bright and early at 7, just like they said that they were going to. Uh, Mike had a quick meeting that he had to take, and it delayed us a little bit, but no big deal. We got out to the yard about 10 o'clock. However, it was August, uh, so the temperature was already hot and it was climbing, and there is no shade to be had. So we got in real quick, we got the block and tackle. We had already talked about what uh, we all needed to be working on once we got there. Mike jumped underneath and started working on the drive shaft. Alex started working on the accelerator pedal, and I was working on everything up top, getting the wiring harness separated and all of those kinds of things. So, um, we worked on that for several hours and finally got the chain hooked to it and we could move it. We could get it up off the mounts, but we couldn't get it out of the car. Uh, we tried several different ways and uh, finally just kind of wore ourselves out. Uh, probably about 1.30, 2 o'clock, my hands just quit working. So I decided uh, that we needed to go ahead and call it. 
Uh, we went back a little dejected back to the house, tail between our legs. Uh, but Mike and Alex had to get cleaned up and drive all the way back to Houston. Uh, I was up all night uh, thinking about what I needed to do the next day. I got out there bright and early. I had a plan. I had lots of water. Uh, went ahead and was able to get the motor out. Uh, Mike has a fantastic motor, engine, transmission, wiring, harness, everything. 450 bucks, aluminum. Uh, he's got a great foundation for a nice project. Yes! This is day one of working on the LM4. Uh, we're just going to take stock of what we've got. Uh, we're going to go through and take the wiring harness off and label all the connections, make sure all the connections are whole. Uh, I know I've got at least one sensor that's uh, broken up here that we're going to end up having to replace when I was pulling things out. Uh, so we're just going to check all of that. Uh, uh, I had to remove the intake manifold while we were in the junkyard, so we're going to go ahead and uh, pull that off and go ahead and vacuum underneath it. There was a lot of debris under there, and I uh, want to make sure that nothing got down in the cylinder heads. Uh, and vacuum all of that if anything did. Uh, and then we'll take those closed, uh, get started with degreasing, and see what we've got. So now we want to tell you a little about our experience when we went to wrench apart to uh, pull this motor. Now, with Pat's hot rod, when he pulled the motor, the front end clip was already removed and the transmission had been uh, disassembled. So it was a pretty straightforward pull. However, the vehicle that this LM4 came out of was a little more complex because everything was all together and uh, we had to, to pull it out and we wanted to take the transmission with it so we would get everything all in one assembly. So the geometry and the angle that you have to pull at uh, can be a little tricky, but there's a few things that you might want to think about first. Some of those things are the, the, the tools and the things that you'll need at the, at the junkyard. Uh, what we found out very quickly is uh, although the vehicles are up on the stands, um, it's still pretty dirty underneath them. There's rocks and dirt, uh, there may be all, all types of fluids and, and stuff falling on you and squirting on you. So you want to probably take a tarp with you when you go out there. Uh, think about uh, maybe bringing a bucket with a lid so you got some place to sit. It's gonna be hot and dirty, so uh, be prepared for it. Bring some drinks, uh, make sure you've got the tools. One thing that we found out is if you leave your tools out in the hot sun, they get pretty hot too. So when you put them in your hand, then you might suffer a, a third degree burn. So be careful with that. Just make sure you got something to cover your tools. Um, bring plenty of water, stay hydrated because it gets pretty hot. And as you're starting to take things apart, think about the systems that are involved. Think about where the lines uh, begin and where they terminate because all this stuff is going to have to come loose. You're probably going to have to take off the, at least one of the exhaust manifolds. Probably have to take off the intake manifold if you want to pull everything as a unit. Again, it depends on, on the situation that you have and how much has already been taken apart. So if you get into a situation where the front end clip is removed uh, and there's no braces or anything that you have to contend with, that's a pretty easy pull. It makes it a lot better if you have a block and tackle and an A-frame. Some yards will have those and you can, you can use the A-frame and rent out the block and tackle for a, a nominal fee. Um, that makes it easy. If not, get a drive shaft and a chain and a couple of early guys and you can pull it yourself. Do it the sweat sweatpants posse route, uh, uh, pulling it with that drive train. Shout out to the sweatpants posse. They are, uh, they're, they're a bigger man than I am. I'm, I'm not gonna go that route. Uh, a lot of the wrench apart places, they also, uh, they post uh, their inventory in the yard. So, so again, I knew exactly what motors this LM4 came in. I kept an eye on the yard for a couple of months uh, and, until I uh, had a few options in there that I thought would have this LM motor. The, the day before that we went out there to pull it, I went out and scouted around and uh, found two options. We picked the cleaner truck and we were able to pull this one. Uh, so again, Mike said that we had to take quite a, things, a few things apart. Ended up having to take the driver's side exhaust manifold as well as the intake manifold uh, to go ahead and, and get it out of that particular vehicle. Uh, this one on the oil pan down here, it also has an east-west hole. Uh, pulling this out of that envoy, and that's the Trailblazer platform. A lot of them came with all-wheel drive, and I assume uh, that that was a drive shaft. They went east-west through the oil pan. 
I had never seen one like that. Usually the truck oil pans are, are really thin here, uh, which makes it a lot easier to, to pull out of the truck. But this, this being as thick as it was, uh, really held us up, and that's why I had to take a take manifold off and some other things to get it out of there. So, uh, <laughs> took two days of uh, greasy, hot, sweaty work, uh, but again, we were able to pull the engine and transmission, uh, wiring harness and take manifold, all of the accessories. Uh, as you see here from Rich Park, uh, they, it, I highly recommend those guys. They run a fantastic yard, uh, and yeah, anything that you need, you can go out there and find it. Okay, boys and girls, pay very close attention. This is According to my words, we are not mechanics. We are just two guys that like to turn wrenches. Uh, do not emulate what we do. Do not try and build a motor the way that we build a motor. Uh, this is Three Stooges kind of stuff on this end, so be safe. Uh, we will try and not do anything on the show that would, uh, that would be terribly unsafe, but uh, again, we are not ones to be copied. So uh, we've got uh, one member of the LS family here. This is the LM4 engine. Um, it's essentially similar to the LM7. Uh, the difference is uh, the LM4 has the aluminum block. Uh, sometimes when you're out in the yard, you might see the aluminum block and mistake it for the L33. But uh, this particular engine um, uh, has two telltale signs. Uh, one of them is this huge hole where the uh, front axle goes uh, in the bottom of the oil pan. So if you see a big hole in the oil pan, you know that uh, it's the LM4 engine. The other one is this power steering uh, pump and filler right here. Uh, this is the clean mount head right here on the front of the engine and this is the only motor that, that comes with that to my knowledge. Uh, but uh, the, the real value of the aluminum block is in heat dissipation. So if you're building a hot rod, if you're going to uh, add some modification to this motor, then uh, having that aluminum block is a good idea. It helps to dissipate that heat, helps you to uh, crank it up even more. Cooler is better. This is a special engine and uh, it's got a lot of possibilities. So we want to drop it in, not just any car. It has to be something that has some, some meaning and some significance for us. Uh, Pat and I grew up in a GM family. There's a few Fords and Mopars scattered about, but it's mostly GNs, uh, Buick GNs, uh, Grand Nationals. Uh, we had a lot of those. Uh, we also have a real strong connection with uh, Chevy Novas. We've owned a couple of them. Our dad restored one uh, from uh, a rolling chassis. Uh, so we've got a real strong connection there. So we want to get some suggestions from, uh, from our viewers on uh, what we should drop it in. Uh, we want to go GM to GM, so we have a lot of possibilities there. Um, we had an 88 Cutlass Cruiser wagon. 78. Oh, 78. Set the way back for 1978. Uh, we had a sky blue Cutlass Cruiser wagon. Um, uh, very boxy, but uh, we think uh, with an LS motor and a, uh, a, a good paint job and maybe some hash marks on the fender, then we could turn that into a real hot rod. Uh, we had a couple of Novas, so we've got a, a strong connection there. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, Nova LS swaps, so we don't want to do something that's so common. Uh, we want to do something a little bit different. So we were thinking about some of the other cars uh, that were made on the X-Body. Uh, that would be the Olds Omega, the Pontiac Ventura, uh, and the Buick Apollo. Now, when I was a kid, I wanted to be an astronaut in the worst way. We live in Houston, so we have a strong connection to the space program. So the Buick Apollo is, is really appealing to us. They only made it for a few years, and they only made about 65,000 of them. So there's not that many of them around, but there's a few that are still in pretty good shape. So we may be leaning towards that, but we want to hear what you have to say. Give, give us your viewpoints. Tell us what you think uh, would be a good GM to drop this LM4 in. Think G body wagon. That's obviously partial to wagons. Um, not opposed to it, wagons are cool. They're also good for hauling stuff and we've got plenty of stuff. One other option uh, that we've been kicking around for a while, oh, that's, that's right. the C4 Corvette. Yeah. Uh, I love the lines on the C4s. I think they're very underappreciated Corvettes. They had some problems uh, at the beginning of the C4s, but they worked them out much later on. Uh, they're also very good for uh, doing that LS. After my dad, after our dad got out of the turbo, uh, turbo Regal uh, business, uh, he bought himself a C6 Corvette. Uh, shortly followed by Mike buying his own C6 Corvette, and I uh, came up in the rear buying my C6 Corvette. It's a family affair. It is a family affair, and we all love our cars, uh, so having another Corvette in the family is never a bad thing. 
Uh, uh, doing the C4 swap, it, it, um, it certainly has been done. There is some support out there for it. I've done some internet research and things like that and, and seeing how it can be done. Uh, I think that we could get that done in a year. So um, the biggest thing with the C4, I mean, for our purposes, would be to buy one with the body and paint and interior in as good a shape as you can get it. We don't care about the motor. I'm not supposed to be having a motor. Uh, so, a nice motor. So it can be knocking like crazy or spewing oil. We, we could care less. Uh, we just you know, need all those other parts. So it's got to go get on crazy. Tell them how we got the spare parts name. So uh, when Lynn and I play in a band, um, and when we were trying to come up with the name for a band, uh, we were inspired by a, a Bruce Springsteen song called Spare Parts. And uh, the, the main hook in the chorus uh, says, spare parts and broken hearts keep the world turning. Uh, so we uh, adopted that uh, for our band and also for our project, uh, because this is totally built on spare parts Spare Parts definitely keeps the world turning around. So uh, we'll be cruising the coast. Uh, join us next month as we talk more about uh, our car of choice. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the mods that we're going to do to our LM4 engine. And we'll also uh, see some footage of Pat doing a very skillful bolt extraction. <laughs> uh, until then, we are the LS Brothers. Built, never bought. <laughs>